In this video, I will be showing you how you can lay out a five-step winder. And at the very end, I will provide you with a reason why you rarely see these used. So the first thing I want to do is break out my trusty calculator and divide 5 into 90. We have a 90 degree angle. If you are going to change the angle of your winder stairway, then you can use a different number besides 90. So let's go ahead and type in 90 and divide it by 5 and that's going to give us 18 and provide us with the angle for each step coming off of our center point. And then I'm going to come 18 degrees off of this line here or 36 degrees off of this line here. 18 plus 18 is 36 and I'm going to repeat this process until I get to my last line. So this line right here will be 18 degrees off of this line until I have created four lines providing us with five steps. And that should look something like this when you're done. Now the next step I'm going to provide you with will be an example of something that you might not want to use. However, it will provide you with another method for laying out this type of stairway. Now the first thing I would do would be to get a framing square and line one of the edges up with the first line or the first riser. And since six inches is probably going to be the minimum inside measurement for a winder stairway, and of course you would have to actually check with your local building department to verify this information, and I would suggest going a little bit longer on this if you can, maybe six and a quarter inches. Now we're going to need to do the same thing for the rest of the steps. And for this one here, we're going to take the next two steps. And you can see here where this one is about six inches and then we have another six inches here. And basically all we're doing is coming off of this step here with a 90 degree angle, the same as we did down here. And we're going to do the same thing up here. Because if I come square off of this step here, it's going to really create something that looks funky. However, you can always see what that looks like by creating your own patterns. And I just want to point something else out before I go on here. And that's the fact that if this was going to be four steps, you could actually use something like this. It might work a little better because you can see where the fifth step here is kind of messing us up. So if I had two, four, six, or eight steps, it might work a little easier than an odd number. And in our second method here, I am going to figure out what I need for six inches here, and then use a circle or a curve to create the inside of the stairway. And you can see here where this measurement isn't going to work. We're going to need to move it a little further out to create something six inches or larger. So we're going to use this measurement here and draw a circle or a curve from the center point here. And then we're going to connect these two points on each one of the steps to create a straight line. Now, if I wanted the inside of the stairway to be curved instead of having straight lines connecting to each other, I would use this line here instead of creating new ones. But since we're not making it a curved stairway, we're making it a winder stairway. We're going to need to connect the dots and get rid of the curves. And hopefully that makes sense because we're going to repeat the process on the other side. And we'll do that by establishing the width of the stairway and then doing the same thing, drawing another curved shape so that we can connect all of the dots again at each one of these intersecting points. And when we build the stairs like this, we will be creating a walk line measurement that will probably be the same for each step. And that's not going to be the same if we create a winder like this. However, it also might be difficult to suggest that this is a winder stairway when it looks more like a curved stairway, where this one right here looks more like a winder stairway. And to create this type of stairway, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to come off of a center point with equal angles and extend the line. So you can see here where if I drew a square 
corner off of these points here and off of these points here, I would end up with the same thing over here as I will over here. And then all we would need to do would be to extend the ends of these lines a little further to create these lines here. And like I said, the only problem I'm going to have with this might be the same problem that your building and safety department will have, and that will be inconsistent walk line measurements. And you can see here where these two are the same and these two are the same. However, your building department might want all of them to be the same. And you can do this on a three-step winder. However, it seems to be a little more difficult the further we extend these measurements. So let's go ahead and wrap this video up. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment area. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure you let us know by either providing us with a positive comment and hitting the thumbs up button, or at the very least, hitting the thumbs up button.